Welcome, my name is Christine Kukich. I'm the Senior Principal Instructor and Taleo Technical Team Lead with Oracle University. Today we will cover through the Learn application and common implementation scenarios and how to use the different building blocks and put them together in the right way for your organizational structure. The agenda that we'll talk about is here and you'll see that we take each of the building blocks and do a little discussion on implementation steps, the use case scenarios, the three different perspectives of users in the system, and then dynamic objects, and put all of those things together at the end. Initially, we start with the implementation categories. And what you'll see here are the four different types of tasks that we put together in the system. So we have the basics of system configuration, and then we have the user configurations, and those give us the baseline on which we can then build and put together the content preparation and the creating and distributing content and containers. So we build the baseline as our starting point, and then we add in all of the different content that we want our users to be able to work with. You'll see here that we've detailed out the different tasks that are involved in each four of those categories, starting here with system configuration. And you'll see here we start talking about some of the different ways that we'll be using the system. Do we need to enable virtual ILTs, for example? Then we move on to what we'll see here in user configuration. This list is a little bit longer because we need to talk about group constructs, how we want people to be able to access the system, how we're going to load users into the system, and that kind of thing as we work our way through. So we've got the creation of those user accounts, the identities of our supervisors, messages, that kind of thing, before we move in to working with content preparation, which is really the meat of any Learn Center that we have, right? What are people going to actually be using the system for? And we get the opportunity to upload and insert all of the different types of learning, deal with credits, categories, and all of that structure here. Then we move in and see what happens with the creating and distributing content and containers. As you start to build your learning, you want to make sure that it's structured in a way that makes sense for your users because you can have different types of users in the system. Then we combine those different types of activities based on the different use case scenarios that we have here. And you'll see that there are seven different use case scenarios. And you don't have to choose just one, right? These can be mix and matched together to make the right Learn Center for your structure as you go through. So we have a lot of pushing activity in items one, two, three, and four, where we push learning plans out to the users. We push out assignments, we push out roles, and then we have training that expires. Some of those things that happen on an annual basis, for example. And then in items five, six, and seven, we tackle some of those extra experiences that we have in the system, like pulling ILT enrollments, browsing and working with other types of learning, and then e-commerce if you're actually going to set the Learn Center up to sell content in the system. And then we combine all of that with the different user types. So you can see here that we have the three different types of users that will be working in the system. The most basic and prolific of the user is just that, right? They're a standard user. They come into the system, they access their learning, or the learning is pushed to them via messages and content activity to work with it. Then we can combine that with the supervisor content. And those people are not only users of the system, but they're also going to be people that manage other users' activities in the system. So they may need to run reports, they may need to monitor certain screens, and work with some of the My Team aspects of working in a Learn Center. And then the third user type is us, right? The system administrator type person. We're not only a user because we may be required to take some of the annual training or biannual types of training that come through the Learn Center, but we also administer all of that back-end activity that we saw in those four task types early on. So we manage the loading of the content, the setting up of the users, and that may not just be one person. We can divide those tasks up amongst different people as we work through the system. So we have the tasks, we have the use case scenarios, we have the user types, and then we combine that together 
with the dynamic objects. And this gives us the opportunity to control what the displays look like and how things behave for the different user types that we have. And you can see the circle here. Again, you're not working exclusively with any one of these items, but you can pick and choose the items that you want to work with. So as we start combining that content together, what we end up with is task lists that give us options. Here, you can see the system configuration by use case, where we have the, the different configuration options, the tasks running down that left-hand side with our seven different use case scenarios going across the top. And as you look at this, you'll see that some of these items are mandatory, required, some of them may be optional, and some of them are not applicable for this particular type of activity. We do the same thing with the user configurations by use case. Again, you can see that here, we don't have a lot of choice, right? In this particular listing options, we see a lot of options are required. And as we move into the content preparation, a little bit more flexibility. You can see here that there's more items that are optional. There's more items that are not applicable as you go through the different use cases based on the tasks that need to be performed. And the longest list by far is what we work with in the, the containers of content, how we put together the information that we want people to be able to learn about, how we track that information, how it gets pushed or pulled as we work through the system. So this is what you end up with, the ability to build out some of your dynamic objects like you see in the left nav bar options. We get some control over what happens with the site and page headers that run across the top of the screen. We get control over what happens with the page tools that we choose to display, what kinds of icons, what kinds of pictures, what kinds of links to other dynamic objects we want people to be able to work with, as well as the page areas at the bottom. And this then, by combining all of those things together in a way that makes sense for our group. So we get a lot of flexibility in the system. Think about all of those things, review the presentations, make a note of the different task items, and then come back and see some of the other options that we have in the learning categories so that you can see how to build it all together. See you again next time.